previous video, we discussed the vocabulary and reference questions. In this video, we will examine the sentence level questions and also discuss the importance of cohesion in understanding how reading ideas connect together. We are now looking at question types 7 and 8 on the TOEFL test. These particular questions refer to ideas at the sentence level. Once again, we'll be using the TOEFL Quip Prep download. You can find the link at the bottom of this screen. And please, once again, make sure you've read and skimmed through the passage. So, simplifying a sentence on the test involves the following ideas. To use somewhat easier words, though not necessarily shorter in terms of the number of words. To reduce the amount of punctuation that's used. To get the essential idea of the sentence. Which, of course, means cutting out some unnecessary words without changing the basic idea. Of course, be careful. Some answer choices may have some of the information, but not all of it. And sometimes to summarize the information in the passage, without focusing too much on specific details. Now, the simplify sentence question on the test is, is pretty easy to, uh, to identify. Uh, the language generally refers to the fact that you need to find the sentence choice that best expresses the idea in the highlighted sentence from the paragraph. However, we're not provided with the sample simplify question in the free download provided by ETS. So uh, we'll take a few minutes to explore how this question might appear on the test and discuss the strategy necessary to solve it. Now the first thing we want to turn to is the idea of cohesion. Now this particular idea we've referenced in some ways throughout the entire video series, but now we're going to look at it a little more specifically. So first off, cohesion is referring to just the general idea of how information fits together. Uh, it often involves the ideas of restating information, clarifying, or perhaps even expanding on information before or after it. So you can find these uh, examples of cohesion through uses of synonyms or synonymous language, uh, reference words, and or appropriate signal words. So oftentimes we think of the concept of cohesion as how information sticks together. Now, we're going to look at paragraph 6 here and kind of demonstrate for a moment uh, some examples of cohesion and how it helps to show how the paragraph is actually organized. So, we're going to look at a couple of examples to see how these things kind of work. First off, I've highlighted in orange uh, how, for, you know, how words are restated. So, for example, obsidian mining and working is restated again as the thriving obsidian operation. Notice the word obsidian is the same, but operation is kind of replacing the words mining and working. Now I've highlighted this signal word, for example, to show that uh, this particular idea is going to be pulled from the information that's listed above. Notice how we refer to other ideas, such as trade, population growth, and so on but that the obsidian operation is now going to be the focus of the next part of the paragraph. So this example shows us the exact connection of how the information uh, follows, how it relates to the information before it. Now notice we've highlighted all this led to increased wealth. So all this is again referring to the thriving obsidian operation. So now we'll see how it kind of refers to the next idea in the paragraph, talking about how much wealth was produced from this operation. So the reference idea here, all this, uh, is kind of leading to the next concept, which is immigration. Now watch how the immigrant idea continues throughout the rest of the paragraph. You will notice that the word immigrant is kind of restated, rephrased in a few different ways. Immigrants, people to move additions to the labor force, and growing population. So notice immigrants is not just something that's referred to once, but it's actually kind of uh, detailing the information in the rest of the paragraph and how those immigrants led to that particular wealth or, or how they were involved in some way. Now there's a purpose for why I've chosen paragraph 6 here because it's going to relate to the question that we're going to uh, kind of hypothetically look at for this particular type. 
So we had talked a little bit about this in the second video, uh, focusing on details, how this information can be restated in many different ways. So uh, it really kind of demonstrates how I think the, the TOEFL is really about vocabulary. Uh, not just questions about vocabulary directly, but also just understanding how these words can be restated. And uh, again, vocabulary, in my opinion, uh, is the improvement of your vocabulary is the best way to improve your reading skills. So, again, why is this important to pay attention to now? Well, in both of the sentence level questions this, in this video, you'll have to be able to recognize how this information fits together. So with the first question type we're examining, uh, you'll have to be able to recognize the appropriate order of information as well as which answer choice will use words or ideas that say basically the same thing without using the exact same words. Now this is a question that I've created here, so this may be a possible simplify sentence question that you could see uh, on this test. So what I've done is I've taken a particular sentence from paragraph 6, it's listed here, the growing power of the elite, who control the economy, would give them the means to physically coerce people to move to Teotihuacan and serve as additions to the labor force. So now the question itself, which of the following answer choices best expresses the idea of the highlighted sentence from paragraph 6? Then over on the right side I've listed the four answer choices. So in a moment we will take a look at them one by one. But first, I've gone back to the paragraph just to show you where the sentence is located. Now, let's kind of demonstrate how cohesion is going to help us and how it helps reading in general. So, we're going to look at some cohesive ideas that help connect the highlighted sentence to the rest of the paragraph. For example, when it said, all of this led to increased wealth, notice how it connects to the idea of this wealth produced this growing power of the elite who controlled the economy. So the wealth created by the uh, immigrant population, uh, and the obsidian operation rather, which uh, attracted more immigrants, basically led to the growing power of the people at the top of the society. And again, notice how it's referred to once again and how it resulted in even more power and wealth for the elite. Now what exactly was that, what exactly created that more power? Well, that would be the immigrants that were attracted because of the wealth. And again, notice that it attracted more immigrants, and it, it coerced people to move to this city and add to the labor force. So, now we're going to look at the answer choices one at a time and see which ones we want to eliminate and which ones we want to keep. So, first off, we notice that in the question itself, and I'll pull up my pen, uh, when we say the word them, we know that them is referring to the immigrants, the immigrant population. So that's important to keep in mind, because as we look at each choice, we have to be clear uh, as to the order of the sentence. Now, first off, confusing distractors. So, you notice we have listed our answer choices, and as we're about ready to look at them one by one, let's be careful of the tricks that the TOEFL loves to use. For example, some of the answer choices may use some of the big, same big words as you see in the passage. That could be a trick. Some of the answer choices add more words, even unnecessary ideas. So these are ideas that aren't even included in the original sentence. We may even misrepresent the information in the passage. Or we may simplify too much, which means we leave out some information that we need to keep or we change the order of the uh, example for really no reason. So the idea is something, again, we referenced in a previous video of kind of translating the information into words that we can understand, um, but certainly keep in mind a couple of things. We want to follow the same basic order of the given sentence. We want to include synonymous information, not information that's directly repeated. That doesn't simplify anything. We want to include all of the same basic ideas of the original text without leaving out any important information. And we want to probably use fewer or at least the same, but not more commas than the original sentence. So now looking at answer choice A. So let's compare the two pieces of information and make sure that we would think that uh, answer choice A would something we keep or something we eliminate. Well, first off, we talk about that the immigrant laborers were necessary in the continued expansion of Teotihuacan. 
Well, we do realize that uh, the economy itself was growing. Uh, we do see the word growing here, and we do see the idea of addition to the labor force. So it looks like some of the information may seem to be restated. The question is, is it restated correctly, or does it include the same information? Well, it does mention that immigrant laborers were necessary, or at least important, but it does seem to leave out some information. So in this case, let's keep it for now, simply because it looks like some of the information is correct. But notice it doesn't mention anything about the uh, elites, the powerful in the society. So in this case, let's keep it for now, but potentially we might want to eliminate it later. Okay, and uh, B talks about that the elite of Teotihuacan physically punished immigrants when they tried to leave the city. Well, first off, we do see the word physically, which is referenced again in the original sentence. But is coerce and punish for example, exactly the same idea? Well, uh, not necessarily. This uh, doesn't necessarily represent the same information in the original sentence. And, for example, notice it doesn't mention anything about leaving the city. So, in this case, even though the elite may have punished immigrants, it doesn't say anything about the immigrants wanting to leave. So, even then, if coerce and punish are not the same, it also seems to misrepresent some of the information. So, also, it uses some of the exact same words, such as physically and elite. These are probably going to be tricks. It looks like there's enough wrong with choice B that we can eliminate this one. Okay, moving on to C. Because of their increasing economic strength, the leaders of the community were able to forcibly move immigrants to come and work in Teotihuacan. Well, I, uh, notice that the particular sentence itself doesn't seem to uh, increase. In fact, it actually reduces the number of, punctu uh, the number of commas, for example, uh, from the original sentence, which the original had two. So that's at least a good sign. Now, what about the order of the sentence? Well, it does mention the increasing economic strength, which is referring to the growing power. It mentions the elite, who were essentially the uh, leaders of the community. Uh, the means to physically coerce. Coerce could f talk about forcibly moving immigrants who moved to Teotihuacan, uh, who basically took, came to Teotihuacan and worked additions to the labor force. So this one seems pretty good. It seems like a lot of the information is lining up. It keeps the original order. Does it keep all of the important ideas? Well, it appears to. So in this case, we're going to keep this one just for now. Now let's look at D. First off, as we pull out our pen tool, we notice that we've at least not uh, added any more commas to the sentence, um, but we've also not reduced them. There are two commas in our choice here, uh, just like there are in the original sentence. So that doesn't necessarily mean we should eliminate it. However, we notice that the sentence uh, choice in D has changed the order, whereas in the original sentence, the elite are basically the subject of the idea. Here we've listed immigrants. So that may not necessarily work. We also notice that it said that immigrants became the most powerful group in Teotihuacan. Well, is that true? Well, in this case, the growing power belongs to the elite, not necessarily to the immigrants. As we mentioned earlier, the word them is referring to immigrants, or the immigrant population, not to the powerful. And so the immigrants, were they able to gain control of these highest levels of society? Well, once again, it was the powerful that gained this, uh, the elite that gained this power. So in this case, when we simplify, we generally want to keep the same order. Immigrants were not the subject of the original idea, so I think in this case, uh, we probably are going to eliminate this sentence. The elites use the pow their power to control the immigrant labor, not the other way around. So in this case, we're going to eliminate D. So with the two choices we did keep, A and C, we probably can guess at this point that C is the correct answer. Mainly because A, even though A might be possible, uh, as we know it is, they were necessary in the continued expansion, they do seem to leave out some information. Again, we mentioned nothing about the elite, 
and how they use their power to basically control or force people to move to the city. So, in this case, we have seen with all of our answer choices the particular tricks that the test is going to use. So even though A has some of the information right, it's clearly not enough. C, on the other hand, basically follows the same order as the original sentence without necessarily using the exact same words. Now, hopefully uh, on the test you will find that it would be kind of as easy as this, but a lot of it does depend on your knowledge of the vocabulary and how the information connects to the rest of the paragraph. Now let's move on to the insert sentences question. Inserting sentences in this particular uh, context involves understanding how signal words, uh, how they work, and how they indicate how information is organized. Now notice not just uh, on the sentence level, but also how they connect paragraphs as well. Because keep in mind, the sentence itself uh, may be needed to be inserted in a, in a text where it's at the beginning of a paragraph, not just in the middle. We also need to understand how to use reference and reference words. This was referred to in the previous video. Because keep in mind, the missing sentence that you have to insert may include a subject that hasn't been referred to yet, or a reference word that does need an antecedent. Inserting sentences also involves understanding how reference words. And remember, reference and reference words were talked about in the previous video. Uh, it's especially important because the missing sentence may include a subject that hasn't been referred to yet, or it may contain a reference word that needs an antecedent. And remember, an antecedent is the uh, information in the text that the reference word is referring to. We also need to understand how restated information can also uh, be organized. And again, this is referring to those synonyms or synonymous information. So in other words, thinking about the simplify, uh, just as with the simplify sentence, cohesion is going to be in very important and the key, really, to understanding how to solve the insert sentence question. Now, uh, once again, this is one of those question types that's fairly easy to identify because the purpose is to insert an additional sentence, usually provided uh, on the TOEFL itself, somewhere in a specified piece of the text. So generally, you will see words such as the following sentence is missing from the text, uh, or the four letters A, B, C, or D, or sometimes they will use boxes, uh, most likely boxes on the test, will indicate where the sentence could go. So, actually looking at the question types, uh, the, this question is included uh, in the sample choice. So, can you find where it is? Take a look, take a, just a moment and look at the questions from the Teotihuacan example given to us by ETS. Well, in this case, it's actually question number 13. So, let's look at it. In paragraph 1 of the passage, so again, we're going all the way back to the beginning, there is a missing sentence. The paragraph is repeated below and shows four letters, A, B, C, and D, which again on the test might be four boxes instead, that indicate where the following sentence could be added. And here's that sentence. In fact, artifacts and pottery from Teotihuacan have been discovered in sites as far away as the Mayan lowlands, the Guatemalan highlands, northern Mexico, and the Gulf of Coast of Mexico. So, again, looking at paragraph one, here are the places where the test is uh, suggesting where the sentence could be inserted. And I've highlighted those here on the screen. Now, I'm not going to actually go through and read the paragraph. You could do that on your own. But the key is to figure out here and to recognize that the sentence could be conceivably placed somewhere in the middle of the paragraph, towards the end, or even as the actual last sentence. So keep in mind, they could choose any part of the passage for you to insert the sentence. Generally, though, it will be four consecutive sentences somewhere in the passage. Now, a trick here to think about is how can we you know, actually find this information? Well, one thing we suggest is to pay attention to the beginning and ends of sentences. So looking at that sentence again, we need to pay attention and to think about how that information is going to fit into the passage. 
For example, if the information at the beginning doesn't fit with the end of choices B through D, then it actually might go with A. If the information at the end of the choice doesn't fit with choices A through C, then it might go with D. So uh, this is kind of difficult to understand right at the moment. We'll put it into practice in just a moment. So keep in mind, though, part of the trick also might be that the TOEFL loves to restate information. So try to pay attention to see if the inserted sentence does have a reference somewhere or a restated idea somewhere else in the passage. So we're going to look at the inserted sentence again, and what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at the beginning and the ending of the sentence. So I've highlighted the beginning, which notice I did not just include in fact. It's connecting the word artifacts and pottery. And then the end of the sentence actually is, if you look at it, a list of several different locations. Gulf Coast of Mexico, Northern Mexico, and so on. And I know this because of the word and. It's kind of indicating that there's more than just one idea at the end of it. So our question is, where in the original text might it refer to artifacts or something like them? or to places similar to the locations listed here. So going back to the original text, do we see anything referring to artifacts, pottery, or any sort of things that people make with their hands? What about the actual locations listed at the end of the inserted sentence? Well, we don't see any mention of artifacts, but there does seem to be a mention of parts of Mesoamerica near point D. Notice down here at the bottom, it does mention that Mesoamerica is now referring to modern Central America and Mexico. So it does seem that part of the sentence is relating to what we see here. So let's kind of bring that information and let's go ahead and try inserting the sentence there at D to see how it fits. So now we've placed the sentence here at D. Let's take a look at it. So reading from the beginning there, moreover. Moreover, the city had economic and perhaps religious contacts with most parts of Mesoamerica. In fact, artifacts and pottery from Teotihuacan have been discovered in sites as far away as the Mayan lowlands, the Guatemalan highlands, northern Mexico, which kind of connects back to the Mexico listed here, and the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Does this seem like perhaps a good fit for the sentence? Well, it does seem to restate a lot of the information that came before it, especially focusing on that Mesoamerica. So it looks like we perhaps have found a good, uh, a good fit for the sentence. Because remember, the TOEFL loves to use restated information, which, as we said before, is an example of cohesion. So keep in mind, a lot of the information on the TOEFL will be very cohesive. It will not be that difficult to see, in this case, how this information connects to each other. So in this case, I think we found our answer in D. So, Type 7 simplifies sentence questions. If you recall, they ask you to restate the essential information of a sentence in basically different words. Type 8 insert sentence questions ask you to place a missing sentence somewhere in a specified piece of text. Now recall that there were some tricks we discussed, especially for the simplify sentence question. For example, we said that this, the particular tricks might include distractors that use some of the same big words as in the passage. Add more words or unnecessary words or ideas to the choice. Misrepresent the information in the passage. Simplify too much while leaving out information. And finally, change the word order for no really uh, apparently good reason. So again, these are common tricks we might see, especially with the simplify sentence question. Once again, we remind you that there are lots of good recommended materials out there to prepare for the test. So we'll see you next time for part six, the final video of the series, the read to learn question and review. Thanks for watching.